All right, so what we've got, these are the factory headlight buckets for the 87 Grand Wagoneer. This section is what I need for it to fit into the headlight opening. But I need to take these off, the square headlights off. These are from what seems to be 76 to 86 CJ7, CJ7 or 5, doesn't matter. And I need the round section of this because these are the wrong, obviously you can tell that these are close, these are far away, these are far away, these are close. It's, 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 they're just wrong, they're just, they just won't work. So I need to take this round bucket off of this mount and put it on the correct mount. So what that's going to entail is removing this screw, removing this screw, and removing this spring from each. There's only three points of contact for each. It's this spring and two adjusting screws for adjusting the headlight up or down or right to left. So that's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> it's literally just gonna be a screwdriver, cross tip screwdriver, not Phillips head. So we've had that discussion before. So we have both of, as I said, we have both of the buckets off of the <clears throat> bases. So now I'm going to take my Dremel and I'm going to use this little, what's, uh, it's a burring device for the Dremel. And I'm going to remove these rivets. I just grind the back side off they should just pop right fall right off and I'm going to do the same thing with these four here and they'll just pop right off and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this inside of here and then mark these holes on this mount and then we will drill holes, create the slots, and then we'll move these into the holes which are the correct distance for mounting them into the Grand Wagoneer's front section. Easy enough. Just cut that little head off as much as you can without damaging the bucket itself. And then just twist it, it came right out. No problem. So that's all of them removed. Literally took me a minute to pull all those off. So now what I can do is I can drop this in here 
just like this. And I can mark exactly where these need to go. Okay. So let's take these off. And now we can fit this down in there a little bit better. Alright, that's those off and you want to leave this because that's where the uh, bezel that I do not have yet, that will be in next week, connects to it on the bottom. So, there we have it. Now I should be able to drop this. I matched up the original bucket with the new bucket there's a screw this this rivet right here for the adjusting screw I put it in the middle of this hole so that I would have a good base for the top and then match this up as best I could and marked all of the holes. So there, it's pretty pretty centered. That's pretty centered on the on the hole. And we've got markings all the way around. <clears throat> so the next step is drilling out these holes and then making the slot so that it can be riveted through here, but it's got a slot so that it doesn't, it's firm and doesn't spin as much as if there wasn't a slot. So we're going to make it exactly the same as it was. So you're going to have two holes and two slots. And up here you're going to have two holes and two slots. And then I'll rivet them together and install it. It's just, it should just be that simple. Later you can tell how much longer the uh, square headlight bucket uh, mounting brackets are compared to the new round ones. So there's also that. The other thing that you have to check is the hole size. It looks like the exact same, see actually the holes a little bit bigger on the old square headlight buckets but the screws that I have to mount it fit through these so I don't have to drill these out at all so just make sure you check that um, the mounting bolts that mount the brackets to the front are, are, are the correct size so I don't have to do any additional drilling that's another good thing. So all I have is drilling in the bucket, making the slot, putting it on, riveting it in, put the two uh, adjusting screws in and the, and the spring, put it back together, and then we'll be all set for installing it and putting the be bezel back on. I'm going to use a spring actuated center punch to uh, set these holes so I can get them exactly where they need to be. Alright, that should be good. We'll drill some, got some 3 16 
ri aluminum rivets that fit perfectly into the hole. So that's what I'm going to use, a 3 16 drill bit to drill these out. Okay. Now we've got all four holes. And don't forget to clean the back side off because you'll have some sharp edges where you just drilled. So make sure you clean that up so you don't cut yourself. And we'll come back and make some slots for these bad boys. What I did was use the backside corner to mark where the end of the slot is. And I'm just using a rivet to draw a slot. And that's pretty as simple as it gets. Pretty simple. What's good is what I figured out was <clears throat> this bit from my Dremel is just small enough so that I can just drill a hole and then grind it over. Drill two holes, one on each end, and then connect it with this in the middle. That is the next step. Go. Well, that's the first one. So instead of pop riveting it in, I'm going to put them all like just like this. That way I can put them on the opening of the headlight area and make sure that they line up with the holes. And if they don't, then I can adjust I can adjust this notch this slot this way or that way so that it matches perfectly. So that's number one done. Definitely may need to test fit your stuff before you rivet it in. So what I had to do to the upper two to get them as close as they even are right now was I had to stretch them. I had to 
bend this and bend this so that it kind of lengthened it out. Otherwise it wasn't fitting at all. So most likely you're gonna have to do that to the bottom ones too. They may have been compressed in shipping or something, I don't know, but they were definitely too short. So what I did was took it over to my vise and I clamped it just like this, which bent bent this down and then I bent this down. So this went this way and this went this way. And in doing that, it makes it a little bit longer. So, all right, so I extended this one a little bit, took a couple of stills to be able to see. by doing that and then, all right so I've got the bottom two in and this one in and this one needs to be extended like fraction <laughs> if at all so there you have it do your do your test fitting prior to riveting everything in because it's always going to be off. It's better to be able to adjust it like this than having to drill and round out holes, make them oblong and do all kinds of other stuff. Easier to do it this way. So always test fit before permanent, permanently fixing something to itself. You know, so if I would have riveted these in before I test fit it, now I had to drill the rivets back out and do it all over again. So just like woodwork, measure twice, three, four times before you cut, test fit before you permanently put attach stuff together. It's a good rule of thumb. Okay, after some last minute trimming, I got them all in their holes, well, in their slots, and then I will adjust the holes to match and then rivet it together. So it's, it's always good to have options. So what I've done this time, I didn't take the original bucket apart. I didn't grind down the rivets and I didn't take the other brackets off because what was the purpose? The only purpose was to have a template to sit on top of here to put the holes in which I did a different way anyway, and attached them while I was, so what I did, bottom line, I didn't take the other one apart. I took these off, bolted them to the support, grill support, and now I'm going to mark where the holes need to go instead of using the other bucket as a template. And if I, if I do it right, I didn't even need to take this bottom one off because it's almost lining up with this hole. I can mark, I can mark the backside right here of this one. So that hole needs to go right there. This hole needs to go right here. 
this hole needed to go right here. Okay, so now I have a general location of where the holes need to go. And if I need to adjust this one after I get these done, then I can adjust it. I can move it over, I can just make it oblong, whatever I need to do, but it really doesn't look like if I just turn it just a little bit, just like that, the holes line up. <laughs> so I, I don't need to take this one off. I don't need to re-drill it at all. I've marked these three. And now I just need to drill these out and I didn't need a template at all. So you can save the other buckets and just adjust this as it needs to be adjusted. So you can do it either way. Whichever way you think is easiest. I'm just giving you options. I will put both techniques in the video for the channel. So there you have it. But I don't think wrecking a whole set of buckets to get a template is worth it. So I'm not. So I've got one good set. I'll put the other set back together. I can rivet them back together. They're perfectly fine. So anyway. I just thought I'd mention that. You can do it, you don't need to do it. You can do whatever you want to. It doesn't make any difference. This is how I'm gonna do it this time. I've got all four tabs attached to the headlight base. And what I need to do now is adjust this bottom tab, which holds the bezel on, and then create the tab at the top because it doesn't have one on this headlight base. So here's the third iteration of my plan in the background. Uh, I have marked the, the support structure and I think I'm going to bend it outward in that area. And also what I've done is I have bent the tab that will hold the top of the bezel, I bent that out backward as well. So it's at an angle. As you can see, it's at an angle. And then once I bend this outward and make the groove, then the bezel should just slide right into the groove that's part of the body. So I don't have to add anything it's just manipulating the body as it sits right now. And then once it slides into that groove that I make, and I'll drill the hole down here, and it'll screw into the bottom, then the bezel will be flush against the, the surface and secured at the top and the bottom. So that's the plan. We'll see how that works out. Well, it looks like it's a success. I got the slot cut and the tab slides right in and fits perfect. So now I can bend. What I'll do is I will bend this down a little bit so that it holds it tighter to the front structure. And then down below, I'll bend the tab that holds the screw on the bottom 
I'll bend this in as well so that it holds the bottom tight to the metal as well and it'll be job done. So that worked out a lot better and a lot easier than I expected it to. So I like it. It's good. I didn't have to add anything. I just used the body itself. So it worked out perfectly. So I drilled and tapped it. So now I've got the screw and it screws right into there so I don't need a nut on the back of it. It's all good. So the process today is to fit this headlight into this bucket mount. So what's going to happen is I've got to measure this out right here, which comes out to about five and a quarter-ish, five and a half maybe. And then I've got to mark the inside of this and cut that part out so that this light will fit in. I've already done some work on the fog lights and I created a template out of plastic that I used to create the brackets which I hooked the lights up to and mounted them in the front grill but these rings are off of the fog lights didn't need them because the plastic was thicker that I mounted it to so I just mounted the screws right through the plastic and into the light and didn't need this ring so I can use this start out that way I can get a I can center it on the hole make a mark all the way around and then I could just cut it out and then if I need to cut anything else off of it then not a problem but at least I've got a good base to go by Alright, so I'll cut that out, and if it's not enough to fit this in, we'll cut some more out, but I think it's going to be pretty close. I get the still pictures for the close up shots. So I've got that started. I'll be back when I've got it all cut out. Well, it helps to have most of the correct tools. I started it with the Dremel just to make a little hole so that I could get in there and cut. I thought about using a hacksaw. And then I've got I've got right turn and left turn and straight tin snips and I just got in there and snipped it right around with these right turn tin snips so turned out good nice clean nice clean edge and now we can see if it actually is going to fit but we're gonna need a little not much just a little more off of that it's kind of kind of hitting the edge so maybe another quarter of an inch needs to come off I might just bend it out make some cuts and bend it out
so that's solid in there. There we have it. Good to go. What I'll do is uh, I'll I clean this up. I'll bend it all the way back down so it's flat, so it's not sharp edges on the back of there. But it's good and solid. That's all I needed it to do. There is a lot of moving parts in this process and you know what, when you're fabricating stuff and you're making stuff from scratch, that's just the way it goes. I mean, there's no way around it. It is what it is. So, we are going to put the actual headlight bucket on the headlight bucket base now. headlight bucket itself into the base that has the screws on it, adjusting screws. They have little slots here. I'm oh, sorry, a spring that connects this hole and comes down and connects on this here. So, actually, what would work perfect for this would be a uh, a tool that is used for um, doing drum brakes um, would have worked perfectly right there there's always something new to learn you know when you're doing stuff so this is a drum brake tool this part here allows you to turn off the clips that hold the springs that hold the, the actual drum pads and this what you do is you hook it around the spring and then you bring it up and like this and it bend and it pulls the spring and then the spring slides down onto where it's supposed to go so that's what that's what that is I just thought of it as I was putting that spring on so you get a little bit of extra education okay back to what we were doing looking around for a full screwdriver sitting right next to me how often do you do shop work in your shop and you're looking for a tool and you're like where's it at and suddenly you're just right in front of your face so maybe it's just me but i highly doubt it what happens if you crank them down too much this is just spot welded on right here this tab is just spot welded on and if 
if you crank it on too much and too much pressure obviously it's going to break so this this light is held in there very tightly right now so we don't need to crank it down anymore all right so that's your headlight and once we put it in and we'll crank these down further well, however we need to do this to aim the light directly down the road as the customer wants it so alrighty so let's go put this thing in the Jeep and get the bezel on and do the other side and these headlights have a turn signal option so it has a daytime running light ring and it has a turn signal option so that's what these additional wires are for Bezel is tight. Everything is good. Looks great. Look at that. That's one. I always need to do the exact same thing on the other side. Fun times. Okay, it's Jeep World. That was a very long process. A lot of learning occurred and better techniques um, along the way were discovered. So please watch this video as many times as you need to. Watch both techniques that I, did, that I gave you on relocating the hold down tabs for the buckets. Be sure of what you wanna do before you start doing it. Stop during your t methods, stop during the process if you need to, and rewatch the video or do some more research. This, this can look absolutely amazing. This turned out fantastic. Both sides did. That's what I want for you. If you like my videos, if you like what I'm doing, hit subscribe down in the corner, hit the notification bell, and Watch what I have coming out next. Have a great day.